What's up, everyone? I'm John Rettinger. Happy Movember, and it's time to talk Quad Core Tegra 3. Let's get started. There's been a lot of talk about Quad Core ever since, well, Dual Core Tegra 2 was released and announced last year at CES. NVIDIA, wanting to one-up themselves, gave some sneak previews of what was then called Project Ka L. For those of you Superman fans, you're going to recognize that name, which had ultimately become Tegra 3, which we finally got all the details on uh, last night, just around 10 p.m. Pacific time. So let me go ahead and run through what Tegra 3 can do and why it really represents a paradigm shift uh, in the tablet and smartphone world. So looking down, I got some notes from me. I'm not inappropriately checking you out, although you do look good today. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some Tegra 3 features. First, it's got a fifth core. It's not just quad core, it's actually got a really cool fifth core, uh, which runs at just about 500 megahertz. So when your tablet's in your bag, pulling an email, it doesn't have to use four cores to do that. Uh, it can run at a very low power and still do generally basic tasks. If you want to play a 1080p video, first queuing up that video and getting that ready to play will fire up all four cores and you can use that companion core to continue to watch your video uninterrupted. What's that going to translate to is incredibly improved battery life uh, over Tegra 2, which is incredible that we're getting uh, the power that we're getting with improved battery life. So Tegra 3's new 12-core GeForce GPU delivers more realism with dynamic lighting, physical effects, high-resolution environments, plus support for 3D stereo. So that's right from the press release. So that's going to translate to games looking more awesome. Uh, when you're playing games in the water, the water is going to look more visualized. You're going to see stuff splash up at you. When you're slicing some guy up with a sword instead of just seeing a little bit of blood, you're going to see realistic blood in the guy's arm uh, fall off. Uh, Tegra 3 will provide the fastest web experience for applications multitasking the fastest high-quality gaming. Uh, it's the world's first quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU which is kind of cool, up to three times higher memory bandwidth and up to two times faster signal processing, new video engines with support for 1080p high profile video at 40 megabits per second. I'm getting all kinds of geeky on you. Uh, 12, core, 12 core GeForce GPU with three times the graphic performance of Tegra 2 uh, processor, including support for stereoscopic 3D. <sighs> And then the new patent pending technology, which includes that fifth core that we were talking about with a run stat for a lower frequency and operates at much lower power. That's a lot of stuff to talk about. So what's this going to mean is that you're going to get much, much, much faster performance from games or from applications. You're going to be able to do a lot more than you could do with a Tegra 2 device, which is already extremely capable, and you're going to do it with better battery life. So the big question, uh, when we had a conference call with NVIDIA and ASUS that uh, most of the journalist folks wanted to know was, okay, great, the, the hardware is incredible. Uh, undoubtedly, this hardware is really second to, second to none as far as what it's capable of. What about the software? Uh, you look at something like Android, which is now just barely uh, being coded for dual core. You look at the Honeycomb operating system, which supports dual core. What about quad core? Uh, and how is that going to sort of play, especially as you make a transition from honeycomb to ice cream sandwich uh, in the phone and tablet world? This chip is going to work in both tablets and phones, much like Tegra 2 is in both tablets uh, and phones right now. So what we're going to see are dedicated applications first that are coded for quad-core. So games and apps will look much better. And we have saw some uh, pictures of what some of these new games are going to look like, and they look incredible. Uh, so it's not going to do much for the core operating system. Uh, some things will take advantage of that fifth core. We're really going to see the big advantage, though, uh, is when we make a transition to Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, which will have support uh, in the OS for quad core. And that's when you're really going to start to see the benefits of Tegra 3. You'll see it in battery life. So anything that you do throughout your tablet is going to be incredibly improved, whether you're scrolling, browsing, watching videos, checking out flash content, whatever it is you're doing, you are going to get much, much, much faster performance. And for those benchmarking geeks out there, uh, you're probably going to get some incredible scores. So Tegra 3 really is a paradigm shift. You're getting just incredible improvements. You're getting almost PC class experience on a mobile device with better battery life. So that fifth core is 
really incredible. Um, and I'm excited to get my hands on the first uh, quad-core tablet, the Asus Transformer Prime, which is a pretty awesome name. Uh, and we'll see how that translates from theoretical to actual and whether or not we see any difference at all, uh, at least at the beginning. So guys, want to know what you want to say or think or whatever about Tegra 3? Are you excited, not excited? I think this is definitely going to push the Android operating system as far as tablets go uh, on par with uh, Apple's offerings and phones. It's really going to do an incredible job uh, with making phones almost desktop grade PCs. Um, so leave your comments down below. Be sure to check out technobuffalo.com for all your tech news. I'm John Rettinger, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.